Hello, you wonderful people. Welcome to or welcome back to the channel. Just me today. And we are going to be talking about how you can create a consistent Instagram profile using Canva that makes people just need and want to follow you. Let's dive in. First, we'll go through creating a brand kit in Canva, and then we'll go into how you can apply this to your Instagram and other social profiles and posts for consistency. So let's kick off with what a Canva brand kit is. So this is a place where you can manage all your brand assets, fonts, logos, colors, images. And as a business owner or creator, this is awesome because everything is in one place where you can go and design anything and you can always make sure you stay consistent with your online presence, which of course branding, you know, it's as old as time. It's super important. It's a visual statement that lets people know you're about your business. And I know that you're about your business. So you want to make sure you're putting your best foot forward always. This lets people know it's an immediate signal that you take what you're doing very seriously. Now, as social media managers who manage graphic design for clients, you can create multiple brand kits per client project you work on, which also makes creating graphics for them so easy as well. Now, if you take a look at our feed and our brand kit, these colors show up on Instagram and on our other social platforms too, and on our website as well, because consistency is key. And typically a brand kit reflects an overall brand guide, which is something that has been created for you by a designer or that you've created yourself, which outlines all your brand assets, which then can get transferred over into Canva so you can execute on it. So typically this looks like the brand guide that you have, that's your overall brand or business guide, you know, and then it goes into your brand kit. So you take those elements and you transfer them over into Canva. But of course you can do this yourself or you can have somebody do this for you. So as you're watching this tutorial, you might already have a brand kit in place, but if you don't, don't worry, I'll show you how you can make one yourself. So something important to consider here is Canva pro versus the free account. So anything with the crown is a pro feature and pro feature features open you up to everything. So if you don't have pro, we definitely recommend it. You can check out a link below that we have to it. We've used Canva for years and we use Canva pro for many, many years. When we went pro, it opened us up to so many more features and it just kind of sucks when you're in there and then something comes up that you want to do and you realize it's a pro only feature and you can't do it. Canva pro has so is, is just so incredible in terms of like how you can be a designer yourself. So definitely recommend making that investment if you can, but you can still use a brand kit with the free. It's a bit more limited, but I'll show you some ways that you can get around it, even if you don't have a pro account, which we'll also talk about later. Now let's dive into how to create a brand kit in Canva. So you'll head over to canva.com slash brand slash brand dash kit, or really it's just going to be on the left hand side here when you head over to canva.com and then you'll navigate over to brand kits. So from there, you would just click add new and you would name your brand kit. So I'm just going to call this brand kit my uh, high season cafe, which we use a lot because one day we're probably gonna have a coffee shop because we really are big uh, coffee fans. So the first thing that you're going to be able to do is add your logo. Please make sure you have PNG. So transparent logo. So that means your logo on a transparent background. So if anyone makes this for you, please make sure that you ask them to get a transparent logo. That means you'll be able to use that logo anywhere on anything. You don't want to have something that's like a JPEG where it's on a static solid background, which means usually like a white background that makes things very complicated when you're trying to use it in various designs. If you haven't had a logo made, you can actually make your own logo in Canva too. So they have a ton of templates that you can just save on a transparent background. Honestly, for a tutorial in one of our membership channel videos, I did, if you don't know about our membership channel, it's linked in the description below. It's where we do like uh, more in-depth tutorials as well. Uh, we'll also do like vlogs, all the fun stuff. And we do bi-weekly Q and A's where we answer questions, all that fun stuff. So in here, I actually needed to make a logo. So I just went into Canva and I created like little coffee logos. So you're able to create logos in Canva as a new design. And again, when you do just save them as a transparent background. And another important tip about logos is when you do have them a recommendation just for best practices is always to have variations of this logo as well so recommending that you have an icon version one that at least spells out your company name in a line and then one that is stacked if possible so you'll see that we have 
the full name version, the icon version, and then a stacked version. That just gives you lots of versatility. If you're creating your own logo, you can do this yourself, or if you're getting one, you can even get them created on Upwork or hire an incredible designer, whatever makes sense for you and your budget. Definitely get those variations because it'll help you with a little bit more flexibility in your designs. Now for this fake high season cafe we have, all you need to do is drag and drop your logos in. So you just hit add new or you drag and drop and just upload your logos directly from the folder that it's in. And now my logos are uploading. Now once we've uploaded our logos, let's consider what our colors are going to be now. So you can add your brand color palette. Usually this is three to five colors that should be consistent and complement each other and show up across your Instagram posts and graphics. So you would enter these using hex codes from an existing color guide. So if you see here, if I hit add new, they're asking for a hex code. That is basically the color code. That's how the color is represented in how colors are made digitally. So you would want to insert those numbers in and you'll add as many as you need. If you do not have a brand color palette set up, you can actually have Canva help build you one. This is really impressive and really helpful. So all you would need to use is use their color palette generator, which I'll pull up here so you can see what that looks like. And I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check it out. But what's great about their color palette is that you can either upload an image and have them pull the colors for you or you can leverage any of the various color combinations that they have, just make sure it makes sense and fits for your brand. Or you can create a custom color palette by just giving them one color and then having them build complementary colors from that. So say I don't have any colors at all already, like I don't have anything in a color palette that exists, I can choose what makes the most sense for me. So say my color is this type of, let's see, bluish vibe going on here that's already gonna give me a color that I would just copy here. And then if I head back into the other tab, I could enter that as a color palette. And then what's awesome is that they'll even give you complementary colors in different formats. So just different color options based on the science of color theory, which is very, very cool. So this is something I don't know if a lot of people know about, but it's very, very helpful in making sure that you have uh, colors that fit and look cohesive with one another. So I'm just clicking copy here and I'm pasting in to get myself these three colors that would be in my color palette. That's how easy it is. Another really cool thing is that you can also title these colors. So like, you know, like sea blue, for example, if you wanted to, we have never done this for ourselves, but our clients, when we have like their true brand kits, they always have actual colors because they've paid a designer to really go in and, you know, it's, it's part of the entire branding of the company. So that's typically important. And then sometimes you may have primary colors, secondary colors, tertiary colors. You can add different palettes as well inside the color section too. So that way you can play off the different types of colors that you have. Then let's head down over into the fonts section here. So fonts is where you can select fonts from Canva or actually upload your own fonts. If you already have them, just make sure that you have the usage rights for them. And then what's also great in this section is you can assign them based on how they're typically used. So for example, we use Open Sans for high season. Of course, Source is right there. So we use Open Sans. So if we typically have all of our titles that show up in a carousel, for example, be a specific size and boldness or, you know, formatting, whether it's italics, we can set that up, which means this will also appear, which I'll show you in a second, inside of Canva when you're creating your designs. And again, you can go through and do this for your subtitles, for your headings and onward. Normally you'd be doing your title and then probably your body, but you can go through and fill everything out. Again, it depends on your brand kit that you have, but very convenient when you're designing to already have your fonts and everything be easily applied to your designs. Now, once you have your fonts chosen, if we navigate down here, you'll see brand voice. Now for brand voice, this is part of Canva's magic, right? And overall Canva's magic AI. And I spoke about it in this video here, one of like the really cool features that Canva has, but essentially magic, right? Is an AI powered tool similar to what you would get from chat GPT that you can use to have Canva write for you. So outlining a brand voice 
will make it so that if you do have magic right right for you it'll be more in line with how your tone of voice actually is so this can also be used as reference for anyone on your team to use as well if you don't have a brand voice and you want to use this feature you can actually have chat gpt help you build one by giving them sample text from content you've written or by asking them to develop one from scratch by asking you the questions needed to create a 500 character brand voice description that reflects your brand so this is something that definitely can be used if you're dabbling in ai we've tested it it is pretty cool we still always write things ourselves but i do love that in terms of efficiency that it's available there for you and when you need some ideation and support with ideation and then as we navigate down, you'll see that you're also able to add like photos, graphics, like overlays or design styles and icons that you'll use consistently. It's a great option to include these so that they're always will be readily available for you when designing. For us, typically with clients, that usually looks like overlay designs that might be included across their assets. And when it comes to adding your photos, if you don't have photos of your own, Unsplash and Pixels are great for this, but Canva, especially when you're using Canva Pro, has all those options themselves as well. So now that we've created our brand kit, let's talk about how you can leverage this brand kit now to create consistent content across your social platforms like Instagram. So you're going to select your brand kit and you'll see everything is listed here. And let's make a carousel post, for example. So I'm actually gonna use one of our own Canva templates. So in case you missed it, we created nearly 30 Canva templates that include pre-made carousels, reels covers, stories, and reels. And I've loved seeing you use them out there in the wild. It's so cool. So if you do, please tag us when you do so we can share it to our stories as well. The link to this is below, but I'm just gonna do that because it's so convenient when you already have your templates created. So another key to that consistency here is creating those templates and having them available to you so that you can always plug and play when it comes to your designs. Now, a really cool feature here is the ability to shuffle which means you'll auto apply colors to the page so you can click multiple times like how convenient is that for bulk creation which i shared love creating things in bulk also talked about that in this video which we'll leave available for you up there and in the description box below but alternatively you can do this element by element so you can update the font, you can um, change the background, you can color your elements, you can do all of this separately just by leveraging the brand kit. And now also because you have your logo available, you could just bring your logo over and you can also drag your photos in and update any photos that you need. And then of course, you would go in and update the text as well. But do you see how convenient that is when you use your brand kit, especially with the shuffle feature? It just will save you so much time to set that up and then again, also make your content and your overall profile look very consistent, which is key. Now that we have that brand kit and we've applied it to our post, let's really discuss how to keep your Instagram feed consistent. First, all the content you share should incorporate consistent brand elements. So this means the fonts and the use of colors. This will immediately create cohesion in your feeds, which again is just an immediate signal like, hey, this people is taking things seriously. And again, this goes for not just your Instagram, but across the board as well. Then we want to bring those over into your story highlights. So your feed should match your highlights. This is a huge missed opportunity, especially just for consistency in your branding. And if you don't have story highlights, we're not even going to get into that, but you should. Highlights are one of the best ways for people who land on your profile to immediately get a download of who you are and what your profile and your content is about. And when it's categorized correctly, you can direct them to key content like your about you page, your services, products, all of those things, the immediate things that people need to see to understand who you are in the limited time that they might give you. Canva has a ton of templates for highlights. You can just apply your brand colors there and you can also just leave them plain and keep the colors only you don't have to do designs and icons and all of this extra things if you don't want to but having them laid out neatly will be very valuable for you especially in continuing to drive traffic and inform the people who land on your profile who are potential followers as to who you are another way to keep your instagram consistent is via grid planning so we use unum to plan our grid but social publishing tools like planoly and later provide grid planning and a free option as well is 
is Canva, which we mentioned in our Canva hacks video, if you check it out there, but Canva also has templates that you can use to plan out your grid, which is very, very helpful if you want to do everything in one place. Another area for consistency is your profile photo. So as a bonus here, you can incorporate your brand color. So if it's a logo, it should likely be in your brand color. So that will make sense, but you can also add a transparent logo over a colored background that would match your feed. And if you have a photo, you can also add like an on brand element to it, or maybe like a little ring around your photo to match your feed. Now, as I mentioned earlier, a little bit of a hack for those who do not yet have Canva pro so that you can still use a brand kit tool. So if you create a brand guideline or style guide, which you can do using the templates that already exist in Canva, Canva has everything. You can bring that design over into a new project and the elements from that design will be imported into that project, which can be used across all the pages anyway. So technically, if you create a brand guideline in Canva, just copy and paste everything into your project every time you go to create a new project and those elements will be available there for you so you can pull directly. It's just a lot more manual and it's like an additional series of steps that you would have to do every single time. That's why I think it's just worth just paying for Canva because it's definitely, definitely worth the investment. Now, if you've gone through this video and you just feel like I actually don't really know what looks good in the end, I've done all this stuff, but does it actually look clean? Or you just want, you know, a little bit of like somebody to bounce ideas off of. That's where our membership channel comes in. We review everything from content to creative to strategy, all the good things for our members. We do it in live Q and A's. We have forms where you can go and submit your designs, your strategies, all of that stuff. And we review it live with you and provide feedback. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can check out our membership details via the description box below and the little join button. That is all for today. I hope this was super helpful for you. And I look forward to seeing your super consistent profile on Instagram and across your various social feeds as well. If you like this video and found it helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Check out this video next. I think you will love it and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.